There's all sorts of reasons someone might use distilled water, but ultimately it comes down to pretty much one of two reasons. They have water that needs to be purified for drinking, or they have water and they need specifically distilled water. In either case, you only have a couple options, and that's buy distilled water or make distilled water. Now, if your grocery store shelves look anything like my grocery store's shelves, you'll notice that the bottled and jugged water is pretty well picked over a lot of the times and has been pretty much since the beginning of this whole COVID-19 thing. Now, it's not just the drinking water that seems to be picked over. It's uh, the drinking water, the spring water, and even the distilled water. Now, I'm guessing a lot of people don't even really know what distilled water is, but they see a nice, clean jug of fresh, drinkable water on the shelf, and they're grabbing it up. Now, there are a bunch of reasons that you need actual distilled water, and I'm not going to get into them in this video, but we're talking mostly about uh, distilled water as a method of purifying water for drinking. For distilling water, you pretty much need three things. Water, a source of heat, and some sort of apparatus that will allow water to boil into steam and then recollect that steam, condensing it back into usable water. I've been interested in trying to build a water distiller for a while. I've seen a lot of different styles. I've seen a lot of uh, commercially manufactured ones that are for sale, and I kind of took a lot of the different uh, ideas and and things that I've seen on a lot of different both homemade and manufactured water distillers and decided to kind of mash them all up into uh, into the one that I've ended up creating. And so that's what this video is all about. I'm going to walk you through how I built my DIY water distiller and we're going to do a full demonstration. A water distiller basically needs to do two things. It needs to boil water to create steam and it needs to capture that steam in a way that allows it to condense back into water. I looked at dozens of different DIY distillers and I really liked some of the things about one in particular. So my design is based heavily on the one I saw on survivalresources.com. Since the boiling water must be directed to the condenser, something with a sealed lid of some sort is needed. Some people use a tea kettle, some use a pressure cooker. I went with a pressure cooker. I found this basic six quart stainless steel pressure cooker on eBay for about 20 bucks. I don't really care if the seal is in great shape because it won't be under a lot of pressure, just enough to direct the steam into a tube. I needed a fitting on my lid that would accommodate my tubing, so first I removed the existing pressure valve. I had to drill the hole a bit bigger and I attached this barbed fitting. I added a small rubber o-ring gasket and tightened the new fitting in place with a nut. That's all I needed to do to the pressure cooker. Now to make the condenser. The purpose of a condenser is to give steam the opportunity to cool back down enough so that it turns back into liquid water. Condensers for various purposes are often built with a coil of copper tubing and that's what I used. This is the part of the survivalresources.com distiller that I really liked. I bought a 20 foot coil of 3 8 inch copper tubing and carefully reformed it to be a much tighter and taller coil. This coil will then be placed into a 2 gallon bucket. Because it needs some sort of support to avoid having the coil collapse under its own weight, I made this basic structure from a piece of punched flat bar bent into a U shape. I added a small cross piece to the bottom with some JB Weld to give it a little more support. Then the coil is attached to the punch bar with a lot of zip ties. Now it's really stable and quite sturdy. Next I drilled a hole near the bottom of the bucket so a bit of the copper tube can poke out. This is where condensed water will drain out of. Now I just need to put the coil into the bucket and carefully push that little bit of tube through the hole I drilled. Now the condenser is basically done. The last thing to do is connect the condenser to the pressure cooker with a bit of 5 16 inch silicone tubing and then run a little bit of silicone tubing from the bottom of the condenser into a water receptacle of some sort. In my case, a mason jar. Now for the demonstration. The reason distillation is so effective at purifying water is because it separates water from everything else. That is to say, it removes the H2O and leaves behind everything that is not H2O. To demonstrate this, I wanted to start with some truly disgusting water that is absolutely not drinkable. 
So I mix some tap water with a big scoop of dirt and compost from my garden and a cup of salt. Because the silicone tubing is very flexible, I need to support it with something so it's not hanging down below the pressure cooker and condenser. I want the steam to have an easy path, so I just used a zip tie and quickly attached it to a nearby cupboard handle. When distilling water like this, cooling the steam back down as quickly as possible is the name of the game. The coil itself will cool some of it down, but that alone isn't enough at this scale. I will end up losing a lot of steam through the bottom of the condenser because not all of it has been able to cool and condense by the time it reaches the bottom. This means you are burning a lot of fuel and losing a lot of potential distilled water. For this reason, it's much more efficient to add a cooling element to the condenser. And this is the reason for putting the coil in a bucket. Filling the bucket with water or ice will increase the efficiency and water output by a lot because it will cool the copper tubing much more than air alone. To start, I put three ice packs in the bucket. This helped, but I was still losing a lot of water to steam. In an earlier experiment, I got about one half quart of distilled water when using the ice packs alone in the course of about an hour. For this experiment, I began adding cool water to the bucket once I began noticing a lot of steam coming out of the condenser. Doing so had an immediate effect and all of the escaping steam condensed instantly to liquid water. By periodically adding cold water through the distillation process, it practically eliminated all of the steam waste coming out of the condenser, thereby achieving what I'll casually call 100% efficiency. I considered sealing this gap around the copper tube where I drilled the hole but I decided against it for two reasons. One, I like the idea of being able to easily remove the condenser from the bucket should I need to do so for cleaning or maintenance purposes. And two, I sort of like that this is acting as a drain. The boiling steam causes the copper tubing to get very hot. I mean, really hot. I would absolutely burn my fingers if I touched it before adding the cool water. Because of this, it heats up the cool water very quickly and this drain makes it convenient in that the water will drain out before it gets to that point and I can easily see when it's time to replenish. Of course, the boiling steam coming out of my mason jar is also a pretty good indicator that it's time for more cool water. If I was using this distiller in a survival situation, I would set the condenser over a larger bucket or, or something like that so I could collect and reuse the cooling water as it drained out and not simply let it go to waste. I let this experiment go on for 35 minutes. In that time, the distiller produced just over 20 fluid ounces of clean water. Without cooling down these coils, it would be at least twice that amount of time for the same quantity. Looking back inside the pressure cooker, you can see all of the disgusting sludge that was left behind. I'll mention that it's a good idea to not let your pressure cooker or kettle boil completely dry, or else you're going to basically fry all this nasty crap to the bottom. Even though the water I'm ever going to likely use as a starting point in a real life scenario is never going to be as repugnant as this, seeing water this nasty turn this clean gives me a lot of confidence in the process and in my execution of it. I poured the leftover sludge into another jar for a side by side comparison. It's very satisfying to me to look at this and know that I extracted the clean from the filthy and that I can now do it anytime I need. All in all, I'm pretty happy with how my distiller turned out. Uh, I may end up tinkering with it a little bit more, try to improve it, or I may come up with a new design altogether. But for now, this thing serves its intended purpose, and uh, I'm pretty happy with it. Got some uh, perfectly clean, drinkable water out of uh, some pretty nasty, disgusting, dirty water. 
What more can you ask for? Obviously it takes a bit of time and a lot of fuel for a heat source. I could see an ideal situation for distilling a lot of water uh, being one that uses firewood uh, with some sort of outdoor stove, maybe near a source of fresh, cool water that you could constantly replenish in the uh, condenser bucket, thereby cooling that coil down and uh, collecting as much water as possible without losing too much of it to steam. But as you can see, it's not entirely efficient, but it is a very effective way to purify water, no matter how dirty or saline it is. And that's kind of what it's all about for me, is having different ways to accomplish uh, my, my objective. In this case, clean drinking water. It's just another tool in the uh, toolbox of, of ways that I could accomplish that. So that's about it. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you liked what you saw, go ahead and click that subscribe button and stay up to date on all of our latest videos. And if you've used any of the techniques or recipes or methods that you've seen on this channel, I'd love for you to share them. Uh, check out the Great Lakes Prepping Facebook page. Tag us, share a picture, share a video, share a story right to the page. We'd love to see it. So thanks for watching and thanks for all the continued support. And until next time, this is Great Lakes Prepping.